Hard to get a bunch of OD consultants to be quiet. So here's what I said. Here's what I said last year. I was invited. I've happened. To, I've, I've had a charmed life. I absolutely have had a charmed life. Where I've been, who I've met, and being at the right place at the right time. Uh, last year, I was invited to teach the first module was on action research to the first PhD program that we think of. It's in China. So I got 16 people uh, from China in a, in a, in a three-day workshop on action research. This is what I said at the beginning. I said, action research, like many of the principles, was developed by a small number of mostly North American and British middle-aged white men just after World War II. <clears throat> As a change consultant, working in a wide variety of, nah, 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 even though the principles have served me and my clients well, those principles do not apply in all cultures and situations. In our course this weekend, will you help me figure out which concepts that worked in other cultures might be adaptable in yours and what you will need to do to modify it? And that, you could I could just feel the room relax. Like he's not going to lay this, you know, American white male trip uh, on us. He's really uh, curious. And that, what, the fact that I did that goes back to the beginning of OD. It's creating a climate of curiosity and discovery and, and, and not uh, selling a package or a product. We're going to come back to that. Because I think one of the major differences is that the early, the early people who were mostly uh, academically based, they were not selling programs. They were trying to discover something. There was something that, that was happening and they were like, wow, what? How could this be? How could they, they were trying to invent and discover a field. Fast forward to the, that was in the 50s, you know, late 40s, 50s, even in the early 60s. Go to the 60s and 70s when I got into this in the late 60s and early 70s. Now suddenly you have people that, that are professionals. They're consultants, which means they have to have cash flow. So now, you're, now you've got a problem here. You're no longer just curious, you're hungry. <clears throat> and you've got mouths to feed. You've created an organization with people that need salaries. You've got something. You now have a sort of an, uh, a, an entity that needs to be fed. And I think that major difference is, is one of the major factors for, for what has helped us disconnect from our roots. So I have a kind of a small mission to keep reconnecting us to our roots. And so it, maybe we'll come back to what happened in China. So I wish I had time to check in with you, but is this kind of like what you said to your partners here? Something like this? Yeah. Hopefully. Okay, cool. If not, next time, say something like this, okay? <laughs> Highly recommend it. Okay. It was very helpful for me. Now, I'm going to start at the beginning of OD. I'd like you to think about a Neanderthal named Karg. I just had to name him something. And so Karg and, and his buddies are, are out... Um, uh, on a mastodon hunt, and, and they lose a couple of people, hunters. They come back, they're sitting around the campfire, and, and Karg says, you know, guys, we've got to do something. We lost another two out there today. We've got to find a better way to, you know, to bring down the mastodon. And I would say that's the first socio-technical OD intervention. It's like, do we need longer spears? You know, they did brainstorming. I can imagine them drawing on the walls of the cave, you know, if they didn't have newsprint <laughs> flip charts. Okay, here, but okay, let's, okay, we can, what about, anybody, what do you think, long spears, you know, what do you think, should we, you know, and they did innovation, they had to, to survive. <laughs> so they were, they were looking at their social uh, uh, system, and they were looking at their tools in order to survive. So I just made up this thing about, this was the first social technical adventure, that's at the beginning. Now we go to, the, to Egypt. See, along the Nile, back in the day, the Nile would flood same time every year. And that's where they got the, 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 the water to irrigate everything. Now, the, the, the trick is that since the whole Nile came up and went down at the same time, you could build uh, dams or dikes along a part of the river, but if somebody in the middle said, nah, I don't believe in that dam stuff, then all the water would drain out. So they, they, these guys went out, they were consultants, probably all men still, and they were engineers, so Siemens, they would have been right at hand. And they go along and they go down the river and they're consulting engineers. And they go down and to make sure that everybody has a dam to the same kind of standards and so forth. So that's more like expert consultants making sure that there's culture change consistent down the entire Nile River. And I, when I thought about how would I explain the history of OD, I thought that's kind of like 
they were trying to create a, a, a very large system that worked for a lot for a large number of people from an expert model. Then you have Moses and Jethro. Um, in, in my tradition, uh, there may be others in some of the other Asian and some of the traditions that I don't know about, but in the biblical tradition, which I'm more familiar with, and uh, this is how the story goes, and he, he, he wanders with his group to Jethro, who is his father-in-law. So Moses married his daughter, and he goes to Jethro and he says, I'm, I'm swamped, man, I need some help. It's the first coaching experience. Okay. And Jethro said, I'm gonna paraphrase here. Jethro says, well, what seems to be the problem, Moses? And Moses says, man, I'm just, I mean, I got people coming to me with stuff and it should not be stuff on my desk, you know what I'm saying? That, that should be on somebody else. This should be handled at a, at a lower pay grade. Why am I dealing with all this stuff? So Jethro says, well, I'll tell you what you do. And Jethro basically creates the first hierarchical order. He said, why don't you take your very best people and put them in charge of hundreds? And then your next best people put them in charge of thousands. These numbers are not accurate. It's kind of biblical, you know, whatever. But the concept is you create a hierarchical organization and you delegate. So it's the first reorg. It was the first, <laughs> first intervention that resulted in a large-scale reorg. Probably not too large, maybe 1,000 people at the most. The way we know is, is uh, how many midwives were on the trip. And the, the, the biblical scholars have figured out you could take the number of midwives and multiply. So it's not like... Like the movies, it was a very, very small group of people that made it out the first time. Then we go to the court jesters. I'm moving fast forward through history. These were people that hung out in the, in the, around the kings and queens, and their job was to speak truth to power and expect to survive. Okay? And they, they had, you know, they were jokers, and they, you know, they dressed up, and they would say, hey, you're, you know, you're really messed up. That decision to invade that country, yeah. And then hope that they, you know... Hope they made it through the next meeting, and, and that's how they were bringing truth to power. So in a way, this is like these first executive coaches who were also functioning in a, in a kind of an expert mode, okay? Now you notice through this whole thing, all the consulting up to now is expert consulting. The expertise is in the consultant, not in the client. And this changes radically with Kurt Levine. We're going to get to him soon. Radical, huge tectonic plate shift when that happens. So, we got an OD family tree. We have the fundamental principles, which we'll, we're going to get to in a bit, and, the, and which the founders, they didn't know those principles. They discovered those principles. I, I didn't know when I, when I named my first program in 1987, this, the, it was a solo uh, executive development. I called it the Executive Development Intensive, a Dutch company. I was doing some work with their executive team and the CEO, uh, Itzhak Van Mel. They make Mentos mints. And um, um, Isaac said, I want you to spend some time with one of my senior people, Bert van Dijk. It's 1987, and so I started working with, uh, working with, uh, with, with Bert. And I said, what do you want me to do with you, Bert? And he said, John, just do me. I said, what do you mean? He says, do whatever you would do with your best friend that would make me a better human being and a better leader. So I said, okay. So I just sat down and looked at my own life. What are the things that were part of my development? So I'm a runner. I had running and yoga and breathing, and we didn't, we didn't have uh, mindfulness. It was centering and all that. I just put this whole package together. Barrett comes, all my gestalt training. He goes back. Next day, Isaac, John, what did you do to Barrett? And I thought, oh, God. He's, I got a guy in Brazil I want to send. He just started sending his people. So that became what I called the EDI, the Executive Development Intensive which morphed into the group version, which is the leadership development intensive with, with more people. Now, I didn't know until two years ago the French origin of the word develop, and I highly recommend it to you. Take this one on. It was, it's not training. In French, développer means to uncover, to unwrap. At Christmas, you, de you, you, you develop your Christmas presents. <laughs> You, you get a package and you say, wow, it's time for me to develop this package, which means to open it up and find out what's inside. I wish I'd known that in 1987. It would have been in all of our brochures. <laughs> it would have been. It's such a powerful, powerful uh, anchor. And, and, and as you'll see in a minute, it's been the core of, of, of our, my philosophy and our philosophy ever since I got into this field. It's discovering what's in there. So the expertise initially is with the person whose package it is, not the person that's helping them unwrap it. 
So that's what the founders were doing. They were, they were unwrapping these principles, discovering, finding these things out in the, in, in the course of addressing problems in the world. Okay? And so here we are. Now, I want you to now talk with this same person. This is the last time you'll talk to this person. So make it a really good one. Okay? And by the way, in threes, you all, you all should know this. You know, the, you know the relational bond theory? So if, if Catherine and I are in a conversation, how many relational bonds are there? Two. Okay? We add one, how many bonds do we have? Six. We've just tripled the social co uh, complexity of this little system. So, if, so if, if a pair has five minutes to do something, how long is it going to take a trio to do that same task and pay attention to each other at the same level? Three times as long. See how that works? Okay. So pairs are really, really helpful here because if you're in a trio, you're going to be pissed off at me for sure because I'm going to give you enough time. So here you are. You're on an airplane. So there are a couple trios here. Deal with it. Just <laughs> either, either, either talk fast or change your system. You're on an airplane. You're sitting next to a 15-year-old kid. The kid looks over and sees your letterhead or something and, or a book you're reading and it says something about OD. And the kid says, OD, overdose, no, what is, what is OD? Now I want you to, talk, so in your pairs, quickly decide who's going to be A and who's going to be B. Okay, so do that real quickly. Who's A and who's B? Okay. Now. Now, yeah, if we had more time, if we had more time, it would be really interesting to look at how you made that decision right there. Some people say, I'm A. Some people say, I bet A is going to go first. I'll be B. Other people say, I don't know what this is about. I, what, what do you want to do? It's just really interesting. So A, yes. Uh, you just suggested to, break, to split up trios. Just let's ensure that there are not people that are going to stay alone. Well, you know what? You're so, uh, such a compassionate. Really, you are. You're a model of that for me. This is where I, I'm, an, I'm an old military guy. I figure these, these people will figure out in their trios what to do. So they might not, and I'll be guilty for the rest of my life, but I'm going to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? D so find a way to take care of yourselves. Thank you for that reminder, because I'm just bla blasting ahead here. Pairs, huh? Pairs if possible. Now, A, A, here's the deal. A, you're a 15-year-old. Thank you. A is a 15-year-old. Okay, where are the A's? Where are the A's? You're the B? Okay, all right, here's the deal. Here's the deal, A. If you're an A, do not let this person get by with a single piece of jargon. They can't say, well, you know, it optimizes the human potential. Okay. So A, A's, A's, I want you to hold up your thumb. Would you hold up your thumb? Okay. In front of you, there's a buzzer. It sounds like this. Eh. One, two, three. Eh. One, two, three. Eh. That's it. So anytime you hear jargon from B, you hit the buzzer, okay? There's, there's probably buzzing going on all around the room. Now, hang on. Now. So. So look up, everybody. This is really simple. B is going to explain what OD is to a teenager without using any jargon, okay? And, and the teenager is, is, is in charge of when there's jargon, all right? I'm just going to give you a few minutes, five minutes at the most, and then we'll see what happens. Everybody ready? And the trios are under control. Ready, go.